put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Skip down to verse 4. Talking about Christ. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he hath set judgment in the earth. And the owl shall wait for his law. And he's showing us that we have to complete our, our call, our, our mission, our task. That he has given unto us that Christ is our example. So he should not fail nor be discouraged no matter what may come his way. No matter what obstacles, no matter what temptations. No matter how he felt. Lord, take this cup from me. And he still finished his work. What the Lord sent him to do. And he said, he shall not fail nor be discouraged until, until it's complete. He has set judgment in the earth. His job was to do that, and he accomplished it. Until he set judgment in the earth. And we have to look at our lives the very same way. That's not about us any longer. Once we accepted Christ, that we take on something much bigger than us. God has called us to do something. And we have to be determined to get it done, no matter what's thrown our way. Because Christ, you know how many times he wanted to quit? He felt like quit, giving up, taking the cup. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. So in the times or the opportunities that we have to be discouraged or to quit, we can't give in. If Christ is our example, he shall not fail nor be discouraged until... He has said judgment in the earth. Completing the task, completing the mission. And that's what it's going to take for us to really, truly be friends with God. To get to that level where we just pass, where we're not babes. We have graduated from sons and daughters and God looks at us and has fellowship with us. Just think about it. Can a parent have a fellowship with a 13-year-old? Can they have fellowship with a 5-year-old? What about somebody who has gone through the same experiences that they have gone through? Of course, Christ went first. So now we can talk, we can relate. Jesus said to those who overcome, them will he let reign with him. So Christ went first and we're going through this process as well. All to be one, to be on the same page with God, face to face. We can behold his glory for eternity. And that is life eternal. To know God. To have intimacy with God. So if something is birthed in that process. And because something is birthed, we continue on the path until it is done. Until it is finished. Let's go back to John 17. Well, actually, let's go to John 15. I'm sorry. John 15, we'll start with verse 12. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants. Wow. I call you not servants. For the servant <laughs> knoweth not what his Lord doeth. <clears throat> but I have called you friends. For all things I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. For the servant knoweth not. And that's why I said we've entered into a new season. Because of our understanding. Knowing God on a more deeper and intimate level. We just have to embrace it. We have to accept it. Of course, we have a long way to go. <clears throat> God wants to call us friends. Imagine God saying, hey, hey, Constance, come here. 
which world do you think we should create over here? You know, we got this extra galaxy over here, kind of. What do you think we should put right here? <laughs> Say, come on, Ray, Ray, come here. Come here, Rachel, come here. You think we should put a river right here? Should we put mountains? What should we put right here? Darius, what should we put right here? That's where the point where God wants us to get to. But we're on one accord with each other. The Bible says, how can two walk together? Unless they be agreed. We have to start seeing God as a loving, caring, intimate God who really wants to be with us. And not just a, a dictator. Yes, yes, he is in control. Yes, we do have to submit to him. Yes, he is our father. But he also is our friend. <coughs> he also is our friend. So going forth, because God has revealed these things to us, we have a great responsibility. And a lot of times we want to run from it. We don't want to really accept all the things that we are responsible for because of this knowledge, because of this understanding. But I encourage you to stay strong and press through the prophecy the Lord spoke to us um, at, the, at the beginning when the church started. To stay strong and press through no matter what. Because there will be times your, test, uh, your faith will be tested. There will be times, opportunities for you to quit. That's why Jesus said those who endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So as we enter into another level in the church, we have to make sure that also the evil that we see will also um, transition as well. We're going to see a lot of things get worse before they get, before they get better. That's why we have to be in position to grow up, to go ahead and get ready for the fingerprint, knowing that the promises of God lie on the other side. We, I mean, we already see it now. This is just a shadow of things to come, a preview. So I encourage you to get ready, be diligent, seek the Lord while you may be found. Press through all the things that we have, and we really have to be aware of the of the enemy. You know, because sometimes we see it as a chore to open up our Bibles. We see it as a chore to pray. We see it as a chore to come to church. And I said, and the Lord showed me, it's a privilege and an honor to partake of God's divine nature. It's a privilege and an honor to be a part of his kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for choosing me. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the opportunity to be conformed to the image of Christ. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a chance to even read your Bible. In some places around the world, we could even have a meeting like this. We can't even crack open our Bibles. Imagine the people who are already in hell begging to take your spot. And we take things for granted. What a privilege and an honor it is to serve the one true and almighty God. Get ready, church. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. We just have to be mindful that you can't take this for granted. Remember the rich man of Lazarus? The rich man begged, go warn my family. Let them know that we have that sense of urgency to passionately get to know God. To where we already know his innermost thoughts. So therefore, when we see false Christ arise, when we see false prophets, we're like, uh-uh. I know my God. When we see the Antichrist, we, we shouldn't be deceived. Because we know God. We know Him. We know Him. Father, right now, we just thank you for this, you, for this time, for this word that you've given us to us. Thank you, Lord. Help us, Father, to really know you, Father, and to really count it a joy to be a part of your ministry and all the things that you've given us to do. We have great work to do, so help us to deny ourselves and pick up our cross and follow you until our work is finished. Help us to get to the point where we can say our meat is to do your will, to finish your work. Help us, Father, forgive us for not seeing your work as important. Forgive us for not seeing 
reading and studying as our necessary food. We ask you, Father, forgive us and to cleanse us and help us to be more diligent than ever before because the time is nigh. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to serve you and to be with you and to be, have the opportunity to be called your friends. Thank you, Father. Be with us, leading God us to all truths as we diligently seek you in each and every day. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.